What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about myself. Super conceited, I know. Today, we're going to talk about the story, how I went from a career in medicine, uh, aspiring physician, to iOS at the you know end of my whole software exploration phase. Um, this isn't something that I've talked about on this channel at all. Um, a lot of my good friends, you know, have seen me go through this, so they're aware. But I thought this was a pretty interesting topic that I might want to share since um, this isn't very common, I think, for people to do. But I think there are a lot of people that are interested in code um, that I've met and seen firsthand in different disciplines uh, that are not engineering, right? That are medicine, that are law, that are business. So that said, make sure you destroy the like button before we get into my, uh, you know, disappointment to my family of not being a doctor. No, but actually hit that like button to keep the YouTube algorithm pushing the video out and let's get into the story. So yeah, uh, let's talk about myself. So, you know, me back in my school days in college, um, I always had a aspiration to go into medicine. It was uh, mainly driven by the fact that I've always been a fairly big uh, people person. I like being social with people. I like meeting new people. I get a lot of fulfillment out of, you know, helping people. Um, whether, you know, that's, you know, here on this YouTube channel teaching or uh, especially in, in healthcare, right? When you can go and someone comes to you with like a pain point or a problem or just something that's like, you know, uh, a hindrance in their life and you can help them out and uh, make them feel better. So that's kind of my, my thought process of always kind of wanting to go into medicine. And more specifically, I was always really interested in cardiology. Um, cardiothoracic surgery is actually the thing that um, I was always interested in and for those of you who you know don't aren't super familiar with medicine talk that's uh, basically heart surgery and anything uh, that's related to your uh, chest cavity so like heart reconstruction and things of that nature so so yeah so uh, college me um, and high school me wanted to go into medicine I uh, you know scheduled and you know uh, took all my classes in that area so you know back in college I was a business and a biology major so my thought process there, you know, was I love business. I want to figure out how I can take my medicine career or my, you know, my coding hobby at the time and turn it into a business. That's where kind of business came from. And then the biology path was kind of like a no brainer. You kind of need to know your sciences. You know, there's some prerequisites for medical school here in the U.S. You need to get those out of the way. Things like, you know, your bios, your chems, your organic chemistries, your your uh, you know fluids and mechanics physics so that's kind of where I was at at that point in my life and at this point you know I was also writing code so like I'd be building side projects um, I'd be building apps personally you know I, I did start building apps uh, back when it was iOS like 3.3 I want to say call it 4 um, so I had been doing this app thing for a while but I never really knew if I could make it like a full-time career if I liked it enough I think my biggest concern about like software engineering at the time was I didn't just want to be this like cubicle person who like sat and like ate Doritos in my corner and just wrote code and you know committed you know my code and just went home without talking to anybody. Um, I always you know wanted to be in a long term career where I do get to collaborate. I do get to not just have uh, input into like my work at what I'm doing, but socialize in the sense of. Just like have a team and like people that are you know nice to talk to um not, not even about like work stuff right like i think i've always very much so liked the idea um, when you are a physician right not only do you you know talk to your patients about you know their their conditions and diagnose them and you know prognosis but you also get to know them especially if they're like a repeat um, and especially if you go into things like cardio or something invasive with surgery you do get to talk to your patients. You do get to, you know, tell them how the procedure works and bring them some comfort. So that's kind of why I always thought, you know, like medicine works, iOS, mm, maybe not the best thing. So fast forward a little bit in, in college, you know, I was doing my thing, doing all my business classes, all the sciences, which frankly took up a lot of time. I mean, chemistry was never my jam. Um, bio wasn't too too bad and uh, you know I'm taking at that point towards the end of college my undergrad career uh, my MCAT which for those of you who are not in the States that's the medical college admission test um, it is similar to uh, a BCAT or a BMAT over in Europe 
after your uh, you know secondary education and that's basically like your standardized tests to get into medical school so I actually studied quite a bit for that test and uh, you know I took it twice um, I would I would say I did reasonably well on it and when it came time um, to start applying to colleges I think I started getting this like feeling of like this is really expensive <laughs> this is a lot of work and I think I started to ask myself more seriously uh, especially if I wanted to do like an invasive specialty that this is gonna take a solid 15 years of my life right so basically my mid 30s if not later in my 30s right you go to medical school you go through residency you go through a fellowship now it might be different in different countries so take it with a grain of salt uh, but it's definitely not something that you can kind of half-ass right like you're, you're going in to be like a specialist and especially in something invasive and surgery not only is it grueling and competitive um, like you know people going into the hospital to do their rounds at like 3 4 a.m but you, you don't want to you don't want to do it with kind of like a half-hearted approach right how many of you would want to go to a surgeon who's like kind of there and just like dreading the fact that they're there and they just like aren't enthusiastic like you want someone somewhat competent who's also uh you know gonna look out for their patients and what my fear started to the fear that started to emerge for me was i really like this but i don't know if i'll hate it in 12 years and this was also uh, when I, you know, started working more so in iOS and not just doing like contracts and, you know, things of that nature, right? This is when, you know, I started doing bigger projects. I had some of my own apps that started getting, you know, a million plus downloads. And I started getting exposed to more so to the iOS community in the sense that, it is something that could scale. It is something sustainable. And, you know, shamelessly a little bit, it is something that's fairly lucrative as well. Right. Um, I still had the concern in the back of my mind. Well, what if I become a cubicle cog, basically? Right. If I go and work for one of these big companies, I don't want a cubicle, even with open floor plans. Like I don't just want a desk. Right. Like I want I want a team and I really want more importantly than that. Like I want to be able to collaborate and feel like I'm making an impact that's more so than just like building an ad or building a feature or, you know, something something very granular and of course every career path has a little bit of um, being tedious some days some days are not as fun it's mundane sometimes that's a part of the job right so you know fast forward i took my mcats i applied to medical colleges you know i started getting ready uh, to go to a particular one and i kind of had i don't want to call it an epiphany because it makes it sound like this glorified moment where like this light bulb went off in my head. But I kind of had this realization, um, and mind you, this is after I spent tens of thousands of dollars on medical school applications, um, you know, MCAT, MCAT prep, uh, medical school applications, for those of you who are not from the States, are very, very expensive. Um, the schools that I were looking at, I was looking at were, you know, anywhere between like three to $400,000 for the course of those four years, add in living expenses, this and that, it gets expensive. Um, so as, as I was kind of doing all that, I had this realization of, okay, why don't I try this like iOS thing? And this is after I've explored, you know, like Android and backend a little bit, PHP, Python. Uh, let me try this iOS thing and see if it floats my boat and it, if it, you know, piques my interest enough where I can see myself doing this for an extended amount of time. Even if I wanted to, you know, change the particular software I work on um, or, you know, even go into like machine learning or change something, right? Like things are going to change in 20 years. Um, and you know, like it's kind of history from there. Like I went and I did that. I worked, uh, you know, a, a couple large organizations, couple large companies. And I, you know, looking back, it's, it's kind of this like glorified thing to say, like I went from medicine to, um, you know, computer science and software. Uh, and I think like the thing that I'll share there also, which a lot of you might not know is I'm actually self-taught, right? Like I taught myself, uh, the majority of the languages that I'm familiar with. Um, and, you know, after I started working more so in iOS and, and in tech, you know, I figured I am self-taught. Let me go and fill in the gaps. So I went to grad school and I got a master's in CS and that really helped me, you know, like fill in my gaps as well as uh, I also think it helped with imposter syndrome a little bit. Right. Because I think it's one thing to just like know the craft, but it also helps to be in a setting with other folks who, you know, are doing something similar to you. Because I remember when I would be with uh, a lot of my peers and friends that are, you know, now in medical school, and actually most of them are, are physicians now, 
um, it, it would just be weird, right? Like I was a guy that would like make an app, right? And they, they were like, you know, everyone else was like studying for chem and organic chemistry and, you know, their, their licensing exams. And I was in the corner making an app. So like it was always, it's kind of funny when you think about it now. And like then I would cram for chem and then I would say I hate chem because it's hard and not acknowledging that I like, you know, spent 20 minutes on it. Um, but I, I do think it's something that I wanted to share because this is something that actually a lot of people struggle with um, of finding, you know, the thing that you really enjoy. And I'll pretty commonly say that I was very fortunate and lucky that I found the thing that I'd like to say that I'm reasonably good at, skilled at that is also highly lucrative on par with things like medicine and law. Um, and even if you go into like management consulting, I've got a couple of buddies at like McKinsey and other large consulting firms. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of checks all the boxes in, in so, some sense, right? I think the path it has a lower barrier to entry. A lot of you guys in particular, and a lot of, you know, people that I know can even go to boot camp. You don't even need to have a degree in the area. So long as you're, you know, willing to learn, you have the aptitude to grow, and you have a genuine interest in it, it's a phenomenal career. The takeaway that I guess I'll share here to wrap up is um, people will talk about finding something you're passionate about, and it sounds like a lot of baloney sometimes. And actually, there's, there's this pretty famous commencement speech that Steve Jobs himself gave at Stanford. Maybe I'll find a clip and toss it into this video if it's not a copyright issue. And he said something along the lines of, you know, find the thing that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And I think that glorifies things a little bit because some days frankly just suck where you're not motivated. That's the honest truth. But I think there's a lot of truth in that statement and the sentiment behind it. And if I was to rephrase it, what I would say is find something that you enjoy and your motivation will follow suit. Right, because if you're doing something, and you know you might start off enjoying it, but if it's not something that you are super thrilled about in ten years, even though like the actual day-to-day -day career aspect might be something that works, you might start dreading it. And you know my parallel to that is, yeah, like I was really into talking to people and medicine, the idea around like surgery and you know even like the material like bio and like the the intricacy of even the heart is like really really fascinating and especially now that there's this overlap of like machine learning computer science and medicine um i honestly hated chemistry <laughs> like it was not my job right i just i was not in, super into it you know i could drag myself through it and i think um a big thing that's different between you know cs computer science and particularly ios and medicine is you do have to pay your dues in both career paths, but there is a lot more mobility in one than the other. And the other, you are signing up for this long track where you are gonna go to like four years of medical school or three years if you're, you know, a superstar. And you are gonna go and do these like residencies where frankly, you end up making in the US like 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars. You are gonna have like, you know, basically a mortgage size loan. Um, if you're taking out student loans, right? Or you're gonna be spending like half a million dollars in education upfronts in your life. And a lot of physicians that, you know, go down that route, like power to them. It's an amazing career. It's super noble, it's super honorable. And it's some of the smartest people that I've met um, throughout my school schooling years and also uh, a lot of my peers. So um, nothing wrong with it, right? I'm not, you know, trying to discount it by any means. But my point is, you know, do something you're passionate about uh, I think I like to hold myself as like a pretty big example of it. You know, maybe it's a little glorified, but I wanted to share the story with you guys. I think I get a lot of questions of, you know, how did I learn uh, iOS? How did I learn CS? And uh, my answer is YouTube, Wikipedia, maybe not Wikipedia, YouTube, Googling, articles, uh, grad school, and just doing it, right? Um, spend time, right? Effort full time, not just time for the sake of time. and you'll get to the goal that you uh, set for yourself. And I think the, the preface there is set a goal. So uh, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's all I've got for you guys today. I didn't want to make this video too, too long. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you guys want to hear more about this and kind of my, my thoughts on it, um, let me know. I don't want to bore you guys with this stuff if you're not super into it. Like the video if you haven't done so already so YouTube can push it out more. Subscribe if you're into iOS and uh, Swift and want to stick around. That all said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.